The search for extraterrestrial life has inspired countless science fiction stories and has even fueled missions by NASA. One of the most intriguing places in this search is Europa, a moon of Jupiter, which many believe could hold crucial information. Bill Nye, the well-known science guy, is among those who advocate for further exploration of Europa, believing that this celestial body might be key to unraveling the mysteries of life beyond Earth. NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft, launched in 1977, made a groundbreaking discovery outside our solar system. This discovery has drawn the attention of some of the brightest minds today, including Bill Nye. What Voyager 1 found was ionized gas particles actively clashing and interacting just beyond the heliosphere, the bubble-like region created by the sun's solar wind. These readings provided significant insights into what conditions might be like beyond our solar system. Could these be indicators of extraterrestrial life? This question has captured the imagination of scientists and space enthusiasts alike. Bill Nye has long been a leading figure in the search for extraterrestrial life. His passion for the unknown is evident in his interviews and lectures, where he often emphasizes the importance of space exploration. The discovery made by Voyager 1 has further fueled this passion, offering new data that could potentially answer the age-old question. Are we alone in the universe? To understand why this discovery is so significant, it's essential to revisit the early days of space exploration and the events leading up to the launch of Voyager 1. In the early 1970s, NASA had recently achieved a monumental feat by sending humans to the moon. This success ignited widespread excitement within the scientific community, and plans were soon underway to explore even farther into space. NASA's next goal was to study the outer planets of the solar system, but sending humans on such a mission was not yet feasible. The vast distances and the limitations of 1970s technology made it necessary to rely on robotic spacecraft for these ambitious explorations. At the time, the Cold War was in full swing and the United States was in a fierce competition with the Soviet Union. This rivalry extended into space, where both nations were striving to demonstrate their technological superiority. The Soviets had made the first significant strides in space exploration, launching the first artificial satellite in 1957 and sending the first man, Yuri Gagarin, into space in 1961. However, the United States caught up with the Apollo 11 mission in 1969, landing astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the moon. This victory was a turning point in the space race, but the U.S. knew it couldn't rest on its laurels. The competition with the Soviet Union continued to drive NASA's ambitions to maintain their lead in space exploration. NASA needed to go beyond the moon, and the goal was now to explore the outer planets. The agency began designing spacecraft that could travel deep into space. One of NASA's first attempts was the Pioneer 10 spacecraft, launched in 1972, which became the first to fly by Jupiter and send back images. Pioneer 11 followed the next year, also heading toward the outer planets. However, NASA wanted a more advanced spacecraft that could capture detailed images and data from not only Jupiter but also Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. This led to the development of the Voyager program. The plan was ambitious, to use a rare planetary alignment known as the Grand Tour to slingshot the spacecraft from one planet to another using gravitational forces. This alignment, occurring only once every 156 years, would allow NASA to study all the outer planets in a single mission, saving both time and money. To accomplish this, NASA built two Voyager spacecraft. Voyager 1 was intended to take a shorter route visiting Jupiter and Saturn, while Voyager 2 would take a longer path to reach Uranus and Neptune. On August 20th, 1977, Voyager 2 was launched, followed by Voyager 1 on September 5th of the same year. These twin spacecraft would go on to make some of the most astonishing discoveries in the history of space exploration. Voyager 1 began capturing images of Jupiter on January 30th, 1979. These pictures revealed details of the gas giant that had never been seen before, including its great red spot, a massive storm that has been raging for centuries. But Voyager 1's mission didn't end there. After completing its flyby of Jupiter, the spacecraft continued on to Saturn, where it sent back more groundbreaking data. The discoveries made by Voyager 1, particularly its detection of ionized gas particles outside the solar system, have had a profound impact on our understanding of the universe. 
As the Voyager missions continue to send data from the far reaches of space, the search for extraterrestrial life remains as urgent as ever. Bill Nye and other scientists believe that exploring places like Europa, with its subsurface ocean, could provide the next major breakthrough. What we learn from these missions could change our understanding of life in the universe forever. Every 96 seconds, Voyager 1 captured images and joined them together to create a colored stop-motion video. Using this technique, Voyager 1 was able to send back a movie showing 10 rotations of the largest gas giant. By February 10th, Voyager 1 had moved into the planet's moon system, sending back footage of natural satellites revolving around the gas giant. By the following month, it discovered a thin ring of dust and ice surrounding the planet that was invisible from a far distance. This proved that Saturn was not the only planet surrounded by rings. The ring was just less than 30 meters in diameter and puzzled scientists regarding how much they didn't know about this planet. By March 5th of that year, Voyager 1 had its closest encounter with a large planet, separated by a mere distance of 174,000 miles. During this special event, the spacecraft encountered several of Jupiter's moons, including Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. The pictures it sent back provided great insight into the strange world of natural satellites, as some of them had almost nothing in common with our moon. These satellites were known as the Galilean moons, named after the astronomer Galileo Galilei, who discovered them back in the 17th century through his telescope. One of the smaller moons seen by Voyager 1 was Amalthea, a reddish and irregularly shaped satellite with a strange surface composition. Images sent by the spacecraft indicated that it is made up of ice and silicate materials. The surface turned red due to the presence of organic material, and its strangely crooked surface indicates that it has experienced very little internal activity compared to the other satellites. Io was discovered to be the most geologically active body in the solar system, with hundreds of active volcanoes and lava flows visible from its surface. These volcanic activities were triggered by tidal heating caused by Jupiter's immense gravity, making the satellite look more like a volcanic inferno than a moon. Europa was most notable for its smooth, icy surface covering a large ocean of water underneath. Many scientists believe that life could thrive beneath the ice, making the satellite a prime candidate for extraterrestrial life forms. A few craters were found on the icy surface, indicating past clashes with asteroids and smaller comets. What followed were images of arguably the largest moon in the solar system, Ganymede. This satellite was so huge that it surpassed the planet Mercury in size. It is large enough to have its own magnetic field, and the images indicated that its surface was mostly covered in rocks and ice. Ganymede's possibly complex geological history continues to puzzle scientists to this day, and it most likely inhabits a molten core deep within that is responsible for its strong magnetic field. Another large satellite seen by the spacecraft was Callisto, the second largest of Jupiter's moons. Its heavily cratered surface indicated a period of frequent clashes with asteroids and also a lack of geological activity. Just like Europa, it also has an ocean underneath the surface, making it another candidate for extraterrestrial life. Two new moons were discovered by the spacecraft and were named Thebe and Matisse. The images implied that they are both small and irregularly shaped, much closer to the planet than the other satellites. It is also interesting to note that the planet itself and the satellites seen by the spacecraft were named after popular mythical figures. The large planet was named after the famous Greco-Roman god of thunder, and the revolving satellites were named after the women who had intimate encounters with him. After the spacecraft's time with Jupiter, a course correction was made so it wouldn't revolve indefinitely around the planet like the natural satellites. This was done in preparation for heading toward Saturn. About six months later, by October of that year, another course correction was made to prevent a potential clash with Titan, one of Saturn's moons. The encounter with Saturn was just as beautiful as the previous one with Jupiter, with the spacecraft discovering five new moons, a ring system with thousands of bands, transient clouds made up of particles called spokes, and a new ring that couldn't be noticed from a far distance. It was also discovered that there were satellites responsible for keeping Saturn's rings as defined as they are. It is perhaps thanks to these discovered satellites that the planet's rings look beautiful by design. In the coming weeks, Voyager 1 captured brilliant photographs of Saturn's moons. These satellites included Titan, 
Mimas, Enceladus, Tethys, Dion, and Rhea. The photos indicated that they were almost likely composed of ice, with possible oceans underneath, increasing the chances of extraterrestrial life thriving outside Earth. But those weren't the only discoveries that shocked the scientists at NASA. More specifically, the satellite Mimas, a relatively small moon, had a special feature that excited fans of science fiction for a long time. This satellite had a large impact crater so wide that it was given the name Herschel. What made it so intriguing was that it made Mimas look like the Death Star from the popular science fiction series Star Wars. This interesting feature indicated very low geological activity and an important past collision with a large asteroid. The other moons seen by the spacecraft were composed mostly of ice, with only a few things of note differentiating each of them. But perhaps the most interesting of the other satellites observed by Voyager 1 was Titan, closely captured by the spacecraft on November 12th at a distance of less than 3,000 miles. The images indicated a thick atmosphere that completely hid the surface. The atmosphere was made up mainly of nitrogen, with the average pressure equal to the air pressure at sea level on Earth but at minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Features of the satellite imply that it might be the first body in the solar system apart from Earth where liquid could exist on the surface. The chemical reactions required for the formation of life seemed present on this satellite, with strong indications hinting at the presence of important hydrocarbons needed for life to occur. The spacecraft's closest moment with Saturn was on November 12th, at less than 8,000 miles from the planet. By 1989, all the planetary encounters were over for both spacecraft, as all four gas giants were explored as intended. However, both spacecraft were still up and running and were declared part of the Voyager Interstellar Mission, an initiative that officially began on January 1, 1990. The new goal was to go further than the outer planets of the solar system and, if possible, even beyond. The more specific goal was to collect data on the region of space dominated by Earth's magnetic and solar fields, as well as the interstellar medium. On February 17, 1998, Voyager 1 became the most distant human-made object in existence, overtaking Pioneer 10 at a distance of almost 70 astronomical units. By September 2017, 45 years after launch, the spacecraft still functioned effectively sending back data from its instruments to NASA's Deep Space Network. It was amazing to scientists that the Cosmic Ray Telescope and Magnetometer still functioned properly after over 40 years of traveling through space. Now traveling into interstellar space, scientists hoped that something out there would find the message we have put out there. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 ventured further from the Sun, and their missions took on new significance. Voyager 1 entered interstellar space in August 2012, marking humanity's first journey into this uncharted region. This milestone provided scientists with a unique opportunity to study the conditions of space beyond the heliosphere, the protective bubble surrounding our solar system. Voyager 1's data has been instrumental in understanding the nature of cosmic rays, magnetic fields, and plasma interactions in interstellar space. Voyager 2, meanwhile, continued its mission to explore the outer edges of the solar system and eventually entered interstellar space in November 2018. Its trajectory provided valuable comparative data to that of Voyager 1, enhancing our understanding of the solar system's boundary regions. Both spacecraft carry a golden record containing sounds and images meant to portray the diversity of life and culture on Earth. This record is a message to any potential extraterrestrial civilizations demonstrating humanity's desire to connect with the cosmos. As the Voyagers continue their journey, they also contribute to the broader field of astrophysics by observing phenomena such as the interstellar medium, the local interstellar cloud, and the interaction of solar wind with the galactic environment. Their findings have provided insights into the structure of the heliosphere and the nature of the interstellar magnetic field. The data from both spacecraft is also crucial for future interstellar missions. As technology advances, scientists and engineers are studying the Voyager's performance to develop new spacecraft capable of traveling even farther into space. This includes potential missions to examine nearby star systems or to investigate the boundaries of the Milky Way galaxy. The legacy of the Voyager missions lies not only in their immediate discoveries but also in their role as precursors to humanity's deeper exploration of the universe.